Hello, and welcome back to The Grunt Perspective. And in this video, I wanted to break down my belt. Um, so just to, just to explain a little bit about how I use belts, I don't really use a belt unless I'm using a plate carrier. Uh, I use a belt because I don't want to put all this stuff on my plate carrier. Uh, so it's useful to kind of separate some of that gear. Um, I don't use it with a chest rig. I certainly don't ever use a belt by itself. So if you see some stuff that like you're wondering why is that on there, or maybe you're wondering why other stuff isn't on here, then once you watch my plate carrier video, I think it'll make a little bit more sense to you uh, once you see that. But um, about belts, belts should be your most essential equipment. Um, if you've watched my video on first line gear, um, I'm carrying all of that stuff already, but I view my belt as an extension of my first line gear. I very seldomly take my belt off when I am using it. Um, I'll take my plate carrier off sometimes if it's safe to do so and I can like kind of rest my shoulders and back a, back a little bit, but my belt pretty much always stays on because it has all the, as I said, essentials on it. So if you're putting something on your belt, uh, it shouldn't be like single use items, it should be like something that has multiple uses that are absolutely essential to your mission um, or your survival or something like that. Right? Um, so the base that I use is a Ferro Concepts Bison belt. This is a size medium. So if that gives you a visual of like how much gear you, you can keep on a, on a, on a medium Bison belt, um, quite a bit, but, um, I've had this belt for almost three years now and I have absolutely no complaints about it at all. It's been amazing. Uh, it's lightweight, it's rigid yet flexible enough to where it's not uncomfortable. Um, it carries the load well, the Velcro is good. The Velcro hasn't worn out and, uh, the Tigris hasn't worn out the, like I, I, I haven't broken any of the webbing on it. Um, it's been great. I, I, I would recommend it, but you, you, you definitely pay for it. I believe the Ferro Concepts belt is the most expensive belt on the market at like over $200. But as I said, uh, you really do get what you pay for. So I would recommend it to anyone if it's in your budget. If not, there's a lot of, there's a lot of other belts that are really good as, as well. Just to name a few like Eagle Industries, Ronin, I'm not sure how expensive the GBRS belt is, but it looks like it's very similar to the Ferro Concepts. Um, so if you need a belt, definitely don't skimp out. Get a quality one. Uh, you won't you you won't regret it. So to talk about what I keep on it, uh, we'll go from left to right. The first thing is a hanger that I use to keep my gloves on. Um, this is just. Uh, HK hook with a piece of webbing that um, I, ha I hang my gloves on. These are these are mechanics fast fits. I've talked about why I like these, but to sum it up, they're a good blend between uh, between durable and dexterous. Um, they last a long time, and they're still you still get the good finger dexterity. So I really like those. But I do sometimes use the uh, SKD peg gloves. Uh, a lot of times when I'm wearing this belt, it's for like a shooting, uh, like a package or like a flat bay range or something like that. So sometimes I, I, I use these gloves too, but if I'm doing like patrolling or something like that, definitely wearing those ones. You could also use this to hang chem lights or other things off of like, like flex cuffs or something like that. I don't do that very often, but the capabilities there, if I ever want to, um, but like I said, I don't do it very often. Um, uh, so moving over, I have two frag pouches. These, these frag pouches are made by a T3 gear. Um, to talk about frag pouches, there's a couple problems that I, that I, that I run into with frag pouches all the time. And like in, in the fleet or like infantry guys, they either don't have frag pouches or they do 
and they have them full of like bullshit, like headlamps, compasses, um, rolls of electrical tape, cans of dip and stuff like that. Like, you know, that, 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 that stuff is good to carry and you should carry it, but it shouldn't be inside a frag pouch. Frag pouches are for frags, right? And if you need to carry frags, now you're going to have a bunch of stuff inside your cargo pockets, which is annoying. Um, and to address the second problem of guys not having frag pouches, I think guys do that because they either like, they don't want to take the time to figure out where they're going to put these things. Uh, they don't want to think about it. Um, but you'll never talk to a combat veteran that'll tell you that, man, I really wish I didn't carry as many frags as, as I did. Um, if you're a grunt conventional infantryman, you need to have frags. Like two is the minimum, but if like if you were in real war, you would have lots and lots and lots of these things, right? So you need to have a way to carry them. Um, and it should be on your belt, pretty essential item to you, right? Not to say that you can't have more on your plate carrier, but I would have at least one on your belt. Moving over. I have the Spiritus, uh, the, uh, the Gista pouch. Um, for a very long time, I used a S-Tac mid-length Kiwi and a Tactical Tailor uh, multi-tool pouch, but I switched to the Gista because it covers the same footprint and it gives me a lot more scalability, uh, which I really liked. So, um, I obviously keep a magazine and a multi-tool inside here. Um, the magazine is self-explanatory, but a multi-tool is something that you should absolutely have on your belt. Uh, it's a super useful item. This uh, is probably what I use more than anything else on my kit is my multi-tool. Uh, everyone's always, uh, who's, who's got a multi-tool? Who's got a multi-tool? You should have a multi-tool. If you don't, I think less of you. Um, but to get to the scalability feature here, uh, this main compartment is big enough to hold two full size smoke grenades, which was the big appeal to me because smoke grenades are, um, they're, they're large and th there's often not really a good, uh, a good place to put them, but I wanted to have them on my belt because they're important. They can be important for signal plan and things like that, or just concealment but I, I, I had no room. Um, so all my smoke grenades were on my plate carrier, um, which I wasn't really happy with. So I got this, I, I have the ability to carry two. Uh, there's also another pocket in here that I have some other stuff in, um, chem light, I have a pen, but what I normally keep inside here is a case of batteries. This is just four double A's, four, one, four one, two threes in a little battery case I got off of Amazon. And these are all lithiums uh, because they last longer. So um, I, re I really like the Gista. It gives like the scalability that was missing for me at, at least. Um, and it keeps it out of the way um, in a pretty slim profile when it's not being used. Um, so I, 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 I really like that. I would recommend that. I've had it for a couple months now. I've had no problems with it. I, re I really like it. Uh, the insert that I'm using, I'm not using a elastic insert or the, or the one that Spiritus will sell you. I'm using the S-Tac insert that I had in my, in, my, in my previous mag pouch. I added some Velcro one wrap and some uh, adhesive Velcro and it fits inside of uh, the Spiritus just a pouch well. Um, I, in Team Kydex, I hate elastic inserts other than like one, which I'll talk about in another video. Um, Cause as, as you can see, I don't use a dump pouch. So re-indexing magazines is something that's really important to me. And elastic inserts are just super fucking finicky. And if you don't get it right, then you're gonna fuck them up and rip them off of the Velcro and stuff like that. So I don't like them at all. 
so I modded this Kydex one and I, and I like that. That works for me. But if you like them, use them. Um, I guess you could train through it, but I didn't even want to give them a chance. So moving to the center line back of the belt, I have a IFAC. This is a LBT 9022 IFAC. Um, and inside of it, I have all of the issued equipment um, minus the chest seals. Because uh, those chest seals are really big, I've swapped them out for the hyphen twin vent chest seals or uh, the hyphen vent twin pack chest seals. Um, and they lay much more flat, so those go inside there. Um, all of that inside of a Ziploc bag, so it's all nice and contained and a, a, a little bit more waterproof. If you don't know how these 9022s work, they have a rip cord down the center here. And once you pull this out, the whole bottom of the pouch just opens up and allows everything to fall out. It's another reason why I have it inside of a Ziploc bag, uh, because if I ever did need to use this, I'd pull that cord and all my stuff would just fall out. Uh, but it falls out inside a bag, nice and contained. I can use what I need to use. And if I don't have time to put it back inside here, I can just shove it all inside of like my cargo pocket or something like that. But I really like this IFAC or this IFAC pouch. Uh, it's nice and slim. It doesn't like shake around when I'm running. It stays pretty solid. Um, it has a three molly footprint, but it's really more like five, five mollies wide with, with the belt laying flat. But obviously like when it's on my body, it's a little more curved like that. So it's not as pronounced, but um, it is a little bit wide. I usually reserve the, the small of my back, the middle of my back for my IFAC. Um, I know that technically you're supposed to use like the victim's IFAC, but it's not a bad idea to be able to use it yourself too, or to access it yourself too. So that's why I keep it in the middle. I can get at it with both hands behind my back, or if I really need to, I can just take the whole belt off and get at it like that. Um, so not a bad idea to be able to access it, of course. And then of course the LBT one comes clearly marked that it's an IFAC. Um, if you can't use unissued pouches or unissued IFAC pouches, which I, I, I know is the case a lot of places, um, you could throw your issued one on, on the back here. As I said, you got five rows of Molly, um, to work with, so that's quite, I think that even covers the whole footprint of the Army issue IFAC, that, because I know that that thing's huge. The Marine one will fit uh, on these three rows, and then it'll extend out on the sides a little bit. Um, so that's the IFAC. Moving over, I have another LBT pouch. Uh, this is their NVG or battery pouch. Uh, when it says battery, I think it refers to like 25 or like 5590s, those really big batteries for like radios or javelins, because um, it would be the perfect size for that. But I use it for NVGs. Inside I have an NVG insert uh, made by, this one is made by, I think T3 gear. And I like this one because it's padded, but it also has like a plastic stiffener in it and it's rigid. So it kind of resists to, uh, to crushing a little bit. Um, another problem that I see a lot with guys with NVGs is that they either don't have them on their belt, which is where they should be. They're, you know, one of those items that are essential um, or they have them on their belt, but they have them in a pouch that doesn't protect them at all. Um, so you need to have your NVGs with you all the time, whether like, I mean, you could argue whether they belong on your kit, but like if you're leaving your PB, your FOB or something like that, they're either on your body, in your pack. It doesn't matter if it's for 20 minutes or four days, like you, they have to be with you, right? You, Cause you never know what could happen. Um, in addition to the NVGs, 
batteries should always be with you. Because just like I said, you never know what's going to happen. I don't use these. I keep, I, I bring batteries in my ruck that I use. These are like emergency batteries. Right. So that goes in there. And then if they don't have an insert to protect them, like um, the PVS 14s are pretty tough. I've used PVS 14s and PVS 31s inside this pouch. Um, the 14s are tough. They're pretty hard to break on, honestly, but the 31s are a lot more fragile. They're more susceptible to being crushed uh, because they have the, you know, the, the two tubes and then the plastic in, in between that mounts them together. That plastic in between breaks. I've seen it happen. I've broken my own. Um, so they need to be protected. Um, yeah, that covers that, I guess. Moving over, I have a knife. This is a Benchmade Nim Ravis, Nim Varis. Not sure how to pronounce it, but I chose this knife for a couple reasons. And it has a good blade profile that is good for uh, some bushcraft, fieldcraft tasks, but it's not too large. Uh, it's relatively lightweight, so I don't feel the weight of it on the belt too much. Um, it's got good blade steel. It's easy to sharpen in the field. Uh, 154 cm. The sheath is okay. It's not my favorite, but it works. Has a button snap on there. Good to not lose it. And then it's attached on the back with this Velcro flap system that just comes on the sheath. So it works. I like it. Uh, knife is one of those things that's pretty essential um, for, you know, like there's, there's, there's no substitute for a knife. If you need to cut something and you don't have a knife, like, I don't know what you're going to do. You know, um, you can't make a field expedient knife out of a rock, something like that. Like you need to have one. Um, if you don't have one, just like the multi-tool, I think less of you. All right. Um, so have a good knife, a fixed blade knife. It doesn't matter the quality or the brand, a folding knife is never going to be able to do what a fixed blade knife can do. Uh, so you need like, you need to have a fixed blade. Um, yeah, that, that covers my spiel on that. Uh, next I have a tourniquet. I have one tourniquet on my belt. I don't have a tourniquet inside the IFAC, so it rides right there. And normally I would uh, advise against having tourniquets in these types of pouches, like just the elastic, uh, because they kind of get worn down, especially if you're, a, a, if you're an infantryman, like you're in the prone a, a lot, you know, you're buddy rushing, um, and these things can get broken. So I keep an eye on this one, make sure it's still working, not broken. It's looking like it's about time to replace this one, but uh, I keep it inside of a soil eater, belt mounted elastic tourniquet holder V3. Uh, and this has a Sharpie holder on there too. And the Sharpie, in addition to the, to the multi-tool, probably use the Sharpie more than anything on my kit. Just for marking targets, um, writing in my, in, in my notebook, but good thing to carry. Obviously the purpose of, of the Sharpie is to write on the tourniquet, but you know, multi-use item. This tourniquet I keep looped. Uh, there's two ways to stage tourniquets looped or folded. For ones that you plan to use on yourself, they should be looped. Or like if you're a prepared citizen and you don't work in like a team environment, all of your tourniquets should be looped uh, because it's pretty hard to feed the running end of a tourniquet through this buckle if you've only got one hand. Um, so, Keeping them looped allows you to use them with, with, with one hand. They're already pre-staged. Um, so I keep this one staged like that. Folding them, I, I keep a couple tourniquets folded as well. The reason being, they're easier to put onto someone else for me uh, when, when they're folded because you can just rip them all the way out and then put them down and go under and make it nice and tight. Um, so I keep half and half, but the ones that I plan on using for myself, I all keep looped. And the ones I plan on using for other people, I keep folded. 
Um, so that covers everything that I keep on my belt and a little bit of the why. Um, to talk about the inner belt, I don't use the inner belt that Pharaoh sends with, with their belt. This is it. It's just it's just very flimsy. It's not really, I don't, I don't really like the flimsy inner belt. Some people like this though. So if, if you like it, this is, this is what it comes with. There's no problems with the quality of it. Um, just not my cup of tea. I prefer the more rigid belt. So this is a safe life defense inner belt. Um, this is a two inch belt, which allows for full connection of uh, the two inch Velcro on, on, uh, the, on the bison belt, which, which I like. Uh, keeps it nice and rigid. I really like my equipment being like rock solid on my belt. So um, yeah, safe life defense inner belt, which I like a lot. It does take a little bit of getting used to. It's very rigid. So if you're a little bit fluffier around the edges, this might not be a good option for you. Okay, so pistol belt, right? Obviously, the purpose of a pistol belt is to carry a pistol, right? Um, but most infantrymen don't get issued pistols. Um, we just don't really have a need for them. They're, we are riflemen, right? So having a pistol isn't, you know, we haven't had pistols for hundreds of years, but now uh, more and more infantrymen are starting to get issued pistols. I've done both. I've been issued pistols. I've been not issued pistols. And when I was is issued a pistol, this is what I used. Um, where I put it, I took my knife off. I moved my belt mounted tourniquet pouch a little bit up. You can see I got a little bit of room there. And I put this mid ride uh, and it went right there, right in front of my NVG pouch and it sat right on my uh, three o'clock. Um, Feral Concepts belt supported it perfectly. Uh, it worked great. Uh, I just had to move my knife to somewhere else on my kit because, you know, as I've mentioned, you need to have a knife. Uh, one mag went in the gun and then my other two mags went inside of a S-TAC, uh, a double pistol mag pouch. Um, and I put that right where my second grenade pouch went, went right here like that in front of the Gista, which is further back than most people run their pistol mags. Uh, it ended up being like right on like my, on like my nine o'clock, uh, like right on my hip. Um, most people run them like up here with like a cant or maybe they run them like this. So I run them on, on, on my side for two reasons. Um, I'm tall, but I have like long legs and kind of a short torso. So Pistol mags up in the front wasn't an option. Uh, my plate carrier was hitting them and I just couldn't do it. And so I had to run them on my side also because of where my radio pouch is on my plate carrier. Uh, with those big like military radios, they, they, they hang down below the cummerbund a little bit and they were hitting my pistol mags. The radios were hitting my pistol mags, which was, a god awful annoying feeling. Uh, so I, so I, I, I had to move them back. Um, if you don't have to use one of those big radios, it probably won't be a problem for you, but I do. So, uh, that's why that I, I run them a little bit further back. Same reason that I run the rifle mag a little bit further back than most people do. Um, just because it's got to get out of the way of my other stuff. As I said, my plate carrier and my belt are like one kit. So, if I only wore the belt, I'd probably run my pistol mag and my rifle mag a little bit closer to the front, but I, I don't, I don't have that option. So that covers my belt and a little bit of why I have the gear that I do have, uh, my like philosophy of use on belts. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, the next video that's coming out is going to be covering the plate carrier that goes in conjunction with this belt. And, uh, thanks for watching.